In this video, I'm gonna talk about the five signs that you're probably with a manipulator. If you're with somebody who's manipulating you, it's a slow and painful death that eventually turns into this place where most of your relationship is defined by all the bullshit you're having to deal with with her, as opposed to actually going out and having a good time. And you're gonna know this because if you're looking at dreading hanging out with her and you're always waiting for, hey, are we gonna have a good day together? Or is it gonna devolve into some sort of three ring shit show where she ends up saying, well, you ruined the day, thanks a lot. Or she starts really belittling you and just not giving you the benefit of the doubt. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about the five red flags, the five signs that you might be with somebody who's a manipulator. And if you are with a manipulator, just remember, the manipulator never shows their hand. My name is Ed Baxter and I help guys in betrayal situations. I've coached thousands of men. Tens of thousands of men have come through my doors in one form or another. I've had over 3,000 guys come through the Betray the Badass program. And that's what we do. We'll get you to that place where you make the right decision for you and your children. The first sign is they make you feel guilty for their mistakes. In other words, you bring something up and somehow it's turned back around on you. And you know what I'm talking about. Somehow you said, hey, I don't like that you leave the dishes out on the sink all the time. And what they end up doing is they'll deflect onto something that you did and somehow make you feel bad about that and for even bringing it up. In other words, they may say something like, well, I don't like the way you're talking to me. You're always just mean to me. You never let me just do what I want. You're always trying to be controlling. You're always trying to blah, blah. And then you're like, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said anything about the dishes. And what ends up happening is you just do the dishes next time. And so they're playing this game where they just deflect and then because they deflect it onto you and then you follow that line of logic, you're like, oh no, okay, now we're talking about me and how I'm messing things up. When you follow that line of manipulation, instead of staying on a topic of, hey, the dishes are still dirty, regardless of what I did, I still need this happening. If they're able to deflect it onto the next thing and then make you feel guilty and shameful about even bringing it up, now they've won the argument. And you go around and you're like, well, I guess I did something wrong. I guess, I guess maybe they're right. And this is where they get you. And so in other words, in order to get around this kind of manipulation, where they deflect, just stay on the original topic at hand. In other words, just say, no, okay, I understand that, you know, maybe you didn't like the way I approached it, so I'll apologize for that, but still, let's talk about the dishes. And you have to be like a dog with a bone. Don't let it go. Just keep coming back to this and be like a broken record. Eventually, they'll either have to crack on it or they'll just eject out of the conversation. What they'll do is when they eject out of the conversation, then you'll see that they, that they don't have any interest in actually addressing it at all. And so you'll see that the manipulator will do anything to keep the manipulation game up. And so we'll talk about the next one now. When you bring this up, they're gonna always escalate it. So in other words, after the deflection doesn't work, they're gonna escalate it and they're gonna say, well, you actually left the dishes out. And you're like, I didn't leave them out. Like, yeah, you did, you always leave dishes everywhere. And so most of these are just your dishes that you did. This is called gaslighting. Gaslighting is where they tell you something is not true or they tell you something is true that is obviously not. And so the most common form of it that you'll see is like what guys come to me for is they'll see that their wife is flirting with somebody and they'll say, no, I didn't. I'm not flirting with him. You're just being jealous. You're just being sensitive. You're just whatever. And so again, this is another type of deflection, right? You're just being this and you didn't see your, with what you saw with your own eyes. And so gaslighting is this thing where if you start eventually believing them, she'll say, you said this. You're like, I didn't say that. Yes, you did. I heard you say it this day. You kept saying it over and over again. You always say this. Like, yeah, I typically, don't, I typically don't say those things. And she's like, yes, you do, you just don't remember. And so they start showing you these, these games that they're playing. And if you start believing them, you start thinking that you're crazy. Man, I guess I just didn't remember properly. I guess maybe some of those dishes are mine. Maybe a couple more were there. Maybe she didn't really flirt with that guy. And maybe I am just being jealous and overly sensitive. And so once she's able to get this into your mind, which is this kind of self-doubt, over time, what will end up happening is you start believing them more than you believe yourself, and then your instincts get overridden. And so what this does is it teaches you not to follow your intuition anymore. It starts teaching you to follow whatever this person says. So in other words, they're going to start escalating things with you, start fighting with you, start shaming you and guilting you and telling you things aren't the way you think they are, and you start thinking that you're more and more at fault. And over time, you're afraid to even bring things up, things that you probably should bring up, boundaries that you probably should enforce. Then on top of the deflection and the shaming and the guilting and the gaslighting, what they'll start to do is try to isolate you from your friends and family because your friends and family will give you an objective perspective on what's going on going on with her. And they've probably already told you their opinion of her. They'll probably tell you like, she's not good for you. She's just trying to use you for money. She treats you like shit. And you'll be like, well, our relationship is different. Our relationship is, is not the same. And when she starts to say stuff like this to you, this is what she's trying to do. She's trying to split you from your family, from your friends. And she'll say things like, we have a special kind of relationship. Yeah, ours is really hot and cold, but they just wouldn't understand. Or they'll say like, your friends don't like me. Your mom doesn't like me. And they'll try to pull you away from, from your family. She's like, your mom doesn't like me, so I don't want to go there for Christmas. And you're like, okay, well, I guess I'm going to go by myself. She's like, you're going to leave me here for Christmas by myself? Now she's guilted and shame you into not seeing your family. 
And so she'll do this more and more often until you eventually have no friends or family that you can hang out. She'll split you from going to the gym. She'll split you from coworkers, especially a female coworker. She'll talk about how she doesn't trust you around them and she gets jealous around these females and then she'll pull you away from anybody, your coworkers. She'll pull you away from your friends. Anybody that can have an outside objective view on what's going on, anybody that you draw power from, anybody that you draw good emotional security from and have from your emotional support network, she won't try to isolate you from all of them because she wants you to see her as your only source of any kind of social validation. If you're dealing with a lot of manipulation, if you're being isolated from your friends and family, look in the description below. We've got a community for you, for guys who are being manipulated, cheated on, betrayed, and you want to get your power back as soon as possible. We've got the special group for you because we know what it feels like. I know what it feels like. I went through this back in 2015. It was the worst experience of my life. This is why I'm doing this work because guys like you dealing with this kind of bullshit, it doesn't have to be this way. In fact, all the way up until December 2nd, I am offering you the audiobook of Betrayed to Badass for just a dollar because that book is powerful and you need to have it in your hands. If you're dealing with lies or manipulation or a wife that just walks away and you can't really understand what's happening and that everything you do is like, it's like she's sand slipping through your fingers. This will turn it around within a couple of weeks. You'll also have the opportunity to join the Genuine Attraction community and you can experience that free for seven days. This community is powerful. There's coaching from me, there's master classes, there's shorts, there's all kinds of things to help boost you forward on a daily basis so that you're not sitting here alone in your pain coming home to an empty house that is echoey because she took all the furniture and you need to have guys around you that have gone through the trenches, they know the game. Why? Because you deserve to win. See, men need to win and they need to win often. And right now, if you're watching this, there's a good chance you've been losing a lot. So let's get your first win and get you into this community. Let's get you to that audiobook for just a dollar and I can't wait to see you inside. Now, somebody who's manipulating you is gonna be hot and cold. And so this hot and cold behavior, in other words, in one moment, she's all loving towards you, she likes you, she's complimenting you. Then the next moment, she cuts you down. And the reason that they do this is because they don't respect you. And they don't respect you because there's no consequences for their actions. So they're just going to do whatever they want. They're gonna be a tyrant. When they get pissed off, there's no repercussions. So they're just gonna go all out on you. And then when they're in a good mood, then they'll pull you back in. And sometimes they'll do this just to play with your emotions, just to see what they can get away with. And so manipulators will do all kinds of really weird things to try to see if you are going to just capitulate. Maybe they'll start trashing your dreams. Maybe they'll just push you to the edge. They might start talking about their ex-boyfriends in front of you just to see how you'll react, just to see if they can get you to chase some more. They might flirt with a guy that they're not actually interested in just to make you jealous just because they like playing this game of power and control over you. And so the more you allow this kind of thing to happen, the more you allow this disrespect to happen in your relationship, just realize that she's going to do more and more because there are no repercussions for what she's doing. And so this hot and cold behavior is designed to make you feel validated and then take that validation away. Make you feel validated, then take that validation away. Coupled with you have no friends or family that you can go to, now your only source of personal validation is from her. And so when the manipulator breaks up with you, they discard you and probably have another guy on the hook before they get rid of you, you'll feel like the only way you can feel better is to get her to talk to you again, to get to like clear the air. And anytime there's any kind of tension between the two of you, you feel all messed up, like you can't do anything right, like your, your anxiety goes through the roof and you just wanna fix it. And part of what they'll do with this hot and cold behavior is they'll freeze you out. They'll give you this silent treatment and they'll wait for you to finally come and apologize, even if you did nothing wrong. You'll say, hey, I need you to do the dishes. She's like, you always get on to me for doing the dishes and you way that you talk to me, you're abusive, you're emotionally abusive. And you're like, I'm not abusive at all. I just ask you to please do the dishes. Then they'll go silent on you. And then like it might be a couple of days or a couple of hours, you're like, look, I guess I'm sorry for telling you to do the dishes. And then what they're doing is, is they're looking for compliance. They're looking for power and control. The manipulator is never interested in having a relationship with you. It's all about power and control. And the more power and control she has over you, the less she's going to respect you because again, her attraction to you is based on your ability to demonstrate power. And if she can't respect you, she can't find you attractive. She can manipulate you. She can't find you attractive. And then she doesn't want to have sex with you. And then you try to do all these things to try to get her in the mood. And then it turns into this thing. It's like, well, if the planets fucking will align, then we can have it. And so it just never happens. And so you're playing this game of chasing, 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 chasing love, chasing validation, chasing sex. And in this game, you lose all your self-respect. You're isolated from your friends. Your only type of validation is from her. And oftentimes for the guy, it's through sex. The manipulator tends to get a guy hooked by using a lot of sex in the beginning and then she pulls it away. And then she blames him for not being in a mood anymore. And so you can see this game of how it's really power and control and it's not about love and understanding. You might be playing a game of love and understanding, but she is not. She's playing power and control. 
And when you play that game of power and control with her, with love and understanding, you get taken advantage of. And you'll see that she'll start using your emotions against you. In other words, she'll leverage all of your emotional states to get what she wants. She'll make you feel guilty. She'll make you feel shameful. She'll tell you that you're just not performing enough, which will make you perform more. She'll start crushing your dreams, telling you that your dreams aren't that good because you need to pretty much worship her. She'll do all of these things and leverage your emotions against you. In other words, she dangled this carrot in front of you of, it'll be awesome in the future. If you could just handle these couple of things, dumbass, this is what she's doing. She'll say, we can't be all amazing like we were in the beginning because, well, you're fucking it up. That means your entire relationship is becoming defined by all the shit you're fucking up and all of her personal problems that you have to come in and save her from. And so your entire life gets wrapped up in her. It's wrapped up in all her issues. And when you're in a relationship like this, you're not actually in a relationship. You're in servitude. You're in slavery. And so you may think that you're saved by God, but you're a saved slave in your relationship. And so it doesn't matter what you do, because as long as you're in this place, you allow her to manipulate you, you're always going to keep getting more of this. And in fact, you're going to get more of it because what you tolerate, you encourage. And as you tolerate more manipulation, you're encouraging more manipulation. And so the only thing that you can do in this situation is to set the boundaries. And if the boundaries aren't held, you just eject, you get out. And if you don't, then you only have yourself to blame. Brother, if you are with a woman who is emotionally manipulating you, then you're not in a relationship. You're in a power struggle. And that power struggle means that she's going to manipulate you and do whatever she wants for one simple reason. You're not willing to walk away. Why? Well, because you're loyal. Because you married her and you have vows and you care about your vows. And this is what she leverages against you. She knows you'll never leave. And this is why she can do whatever she wants. This is why you can just tell her, hey, I don't like this, I don't like this, I don't like this, and nothing ever changes. There's no consequences to her actions. And so you're in this place where you're just stuck. And if you want to get unstuck, if you're in a situation where your wife or your girlfriend has cheated on you, and you want to move forward powerfully, the cool thing is your process is the same for reconciliation or moving on. And that requires you to build a seductive life. Learn how to seduce your wife and to move forward. And you will learn more about that in the description below in the Soul Seducer or the Broken to Badass programs. And brother, if you want to learn more about manipulation, how to spot it, check out this video right here. If you like this video, you want to share it with other guys without actually sharing it, just hit the like button. If you want to see more of them and be notified when a new video comes out, hit the subscribe button. I'll see you in the next one.